Are you looking for a monologue for an audition but don't know where to start? Then this is the video for you. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, hit the bell icon. Welcome to Organic Acting. I'm Chris Conway and this is how to choose the right monologue for an audition and work on it. So you guys are watching this because you've probably got an audition coming up and you're looking to find monologues. The first question you're probably asking yourselves is, where do I start finding monologues? Well, the first thing I would say is, it's an opportunity for you to start reading as widely as you can. You want to try and create some kind of arsenal, as I call it, um, a collection of monologues which are yours, which you are used to performing, which actually resonate with you. So it's an opportunity to read as many plays, read as many screenplays as possible. I usually tend towards the play script side of things because when we're getting into screenplays and we're getting into films, it starts to get on more shaky ground. And what I mean by this is, there are a lot of people who like to perform mon monologues from their favorite films, their favorite movies. The problem with this is, you know that monologue so well because of how that actor performs it, that you will start to perform that monologue the way the actor performs it. Even if you try your best to put your own slant on it, you're gonna give a flavor of that actor. So I try to stay away from that area of things. If, if I've got a student that really wants to perform a, a monologue from Pulp Fiction, I will say, no, don't do it. Tend towards the play script side of things. Tend towards something you haven't seen. If you want to do a, a, a movie screenplay, make sure you don't know it. Make sure it's not well known. One of the things I like to do is go online, so I'll go on Amazon for example, and I will find texts, plays, or collections of monologues put into book form. Uh, like these for example, here we've got contemporary man monologues, uh, book of monologues, uh, modern monologues for men, um, and all of these pull together all these monologues you may have never read or come across into one handy resource and you can just go through there and find something that you, you think is interesting, uh, something that resonates with you, something that you can start to rehearse and make your own. Um, one of the things I find useful is going on to going on to Amazon for this. Now, disclaimer, I am not connected to Amazon. I am not affiliated with Amazon at all. Uh, but what I find useful is that they have, for, for each of these books, each of their products, they have a used tab at the bottom. So you can find a lot of these books for pennies, literally pennies. Some of them might have a few annotations in, in, in the margin, a few pencil marks, but you can rub those out. But they're as good as new, really. So you can get your hands on masses of monologues for, for, for next to nothing. Then, once you've found something that really resonates with you, you want to start working on the text. You want to go through all the processes that I've mentioned in my other videos, such as working out who the character is, what they want, what their objective is. You want to start working out how the character is going to try and achieve that objective through specific actions or moments in the text. So what I'm going to do now is give you an example from a, a monologue that I use and I will show you how I have broken the monologue down. Um, in terms of length, you want monologues to be about two minutes. No more than that. Two and a half minutes is really pushing it. You want to try and keep it to two minutes if possible. So for my example, this is um, a monologue from a uh, a collection, it's called Deep Heat by Robin Soans, and it's a collection of monologues which he has put together which are actually based on real conversations he's heard, of real, real people speaking, and he's taken everything that he's heard and he's kind of put them all together, perhaps put a bit of a fictional spin on it here and there. One of the monologues I really like is right at the beginning, it's a guy called Philip who is an understudy uh, waiting below in the green room while a play is going on and he's talking about his experiences as an understudy. 
So come take a look at how I have worked on this monologue. So this is behind the scenes on my very messy desk. Please excuse this. Um, and this is the play I just mentioned, DP. Um, and I chose this monologue in particular because it's a character who's an understudy, as I mentioned, and he's kind of a, quite a proud character. He's um, perhaps got delusions of grandeur. He thinks he should be more than he is. He wants to be a mainstream actor. It's quite comedic and it fits in. Uh, it's nice to have a mixture of monologues, a classical, a contemporary, a, a dramatic, a comedy, and this is a contemporary comedy piece. So here you are, a big chunk of text, and what I have done is I have typed it out and I have annotated it using all the skills I've mentioned in some of my previous videos. So here I've got um, an objective, um, I want to gain your, the audience's support, and impress upon you my importance. And here you see, I have annotated each moment, each dramatic change with an action. So a psychological action, which is gonna change the way I perform a line and the way I deliver a line. So, you know, if you are going to say a line in a threatening way, it's going to be very different from if you deliver it in a flirty way. So um, I intimidate or I flirt. Very two different psychological actions. And there you can see each moment is annotated. And that gives me um, a kind of a, a rise and a fall in action. So every line is different. Uh, no two lines are the same. It's not monotone. It's constantly moving. Now, um, when I give you my performance of this, obviously I'm doing it for the camera, so it's gonna be quite uh, still. It's gonna be um, in one location, obviously in front of the camera. If you're performing this for a stage audition, you're gonna to want to work out the character's physicality and the way they move, the, where they're going to move um, on the stage location. But anyway, Enough of that, let's see how I perform this piece. Air to cross, Indian currency. Five letters, beginning with an R. Yes, well that's rupee. And there you see, that gives you a P third in two down, P blank P, so it's poppy. I thought it was, but I don't like to fill it in till I'm sure. I take my understudy role very seriously, as you can tell, and it's a responsible position. I know I don't get the glory, but they also serve who only stand and wait. And you never know when your big chance will come, do you? And it's no good being thrust into the limelight half cock, if you see what I mean. I sometimes think people don't realise the hard work that goes on underneath the surface. <laughs> no one goes on Krill Watch, do they? <laughs> Come on everyone, let's pack up a picnic and go and watch some krill. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, there wouldn't be any whales if there wasn't krill for them to feed on. And I don't know about you, but I don't think krill get the credit they deserve. Whether the audience realises it or not, an understudy is an insurance policy to make sure they get their evening's entertainment. Children at the circus can only really enjoy the trapeze artist because they know there's a safety net. <laughs> you couldn't have some glitter-clad nymphette plummet into a death every five minutes, could you? And that's what I am. A safety net. And if anything should happen to Simon, laryngitis can affect the greatest. Or if in mid-performance he gets a peanut stuck in his windpipe, or he trips over a stage brace and concusses himself on the sideboard, there I am, to seamlessly take up the mantle and carry the audience safely through to curtain down. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I've been Chris Conway, see you next time.